Welcome everybody. It's been a while, but it's good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. <clears throat> I want to let you know that we're going to have this video, special video, just for you guys on the YouTube channel. Uh, we're so happy that you're subscribed and that you're watching our videos and what we're trying to do uh, with what God has given us. So the title for today's little talk, which is going to be a few minutes, is The Feast. So I hope you got your spoons and forks ready. We're going to get right into it. So um, today, there's what I want to talk about is something that we all deal with. It's called the too busy pox. I actually just made that up myself. Uh, it's you know you you get so busy that you're stuck doing your own stuff and you forget what's really important in life. And I think for a lot of us, uh, we forget about what's really important. So maybe that's you today, maybe not, but I know I've certainly dealt with it. Um, and I guess to introduce it is. Uh, something that maybe we can relate to. Have you ever been invited to a party? Maybe a wedding? Um, I know we get them all the time. I recently was invited to a birthday party and I just had too much to do. I was tired. I got off from work. I didn't want to go and uh, I just didn't go. And I got the invitation like weeks before. Uh, maybe you've gotten invited to a birthday. Maybe it was a wedding. Maybe it was just something, um, something that people invited you to and uh, they really wanted you to go, but at the last minute, you just say, I got better things to do. I got to watch my Vampire Diaries, or I got to watch whatever it is you watch. My YouTube, my brother, which is Goku, Dragon Ball Z, whatever it is. Too busy. So we've got this too busy syndrome. And you know what? In the, um, in the time of Jesus, uh, Jesus dealt with this, a problem that was similar, not quite the same, but very similar. And he spoke to people who thought they were a bit entitled uh, to make these choices of, nah, I don't want to go. And uh, I, th I think for us, it's going to really shake us up in some things that we're dealing with as far as prioritizing what's really important. So if you have your Bible, if not, jump right in with me. Luke chapter 14 verse 15, and we're going to actually read all the way to 24. It's not that big, but it is. So let's read it. Luke 15, and I'm going to read it for you. When one of those who reclined at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. So that's just introducing the story there. Jesus was having this conversation with some people he was at a feast with. And then somebody says, you know what? There's, blessed is that people are going to have a feast with Jesus in the kingdom or, or with, in the kingdom with God. And then Jesus replies with this story. But Jesus said to him, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who have been invited, come for everything's ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I got a field and I got to go see it. I just bought it, God, and I got to go see it. I got to measure it. I got to make sure that I got a good one. Please excuse me from this. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I got to go examine them. I got to make sure that, you know, I got a good buy there. Um, and please have me excuse. And another said, I just got a wife. And therefore, I can't come. And I know, at least for that one, pretty much everybody would say, you got married, look, I can't, I got, you know, I need time with my wife or with your husband. And he said, please have me excused. So the servant came and reported all these things to the master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to the servant, go out quickly to the streets and to the lanes of the city. And bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done. And there's still room. I got all the lame, the crippled, the blind, the poor. I got them all. And there's still lots of room. There's still lots of food. And then the master said to the servant, Okay, now go into the highways, the hedges, and compel people to come in that my house can be filled. Because I want people. For I tell you, none of those guys who were invited shall taste my banquet. So a little harsh at the end. How would you feel if the person who invited you to one of your those events, you didn't go and he says, you know what, you ain't never coming to the event of mine again. 
ever. I go, oh, wow, I messed up there. But I think there's uh, something deep Jesus is trying to illustrate. Jesus is actually using something called a parable. And if you don't know what a parable is, a parable is a story used to illustrate a lesson or teach teach a truth. And Jesus used these a lot to teach people. So, um, he, if, if we can relate it to us today, what he's trying to say, Jesus at least, he's saying, look, there's a big feast. Lots of people were invited. Okay? But nobody showed up. And the guy who called the banquet on was mad. Oh, man. And he says, you know what? Invite everybody. Invite everybody who I didn't invite. And he went out to the byways. And they actually went to the, they went to the hoods. They went to the back of the Safeways. They got people out. They went to under the bridges. They just found anybody they could. And they brought them in. And they said, look, there's still room. And they got more. And Jesus, at this feast, he delivers this story to the people there. And, and, you know, maybe they're thinking, what the heck does this mean? But I want to go over that with you today. There's a huge point he was illustrating. And I think to make it simple, this is what he was saying. The parable is illustrating is that God, God gave an invitation to you guys. Jesus is telling the Jews there, he was sitting with the Pharisees, Sadducees, people invited him over. God invited you guys to come into eternity with him. And he sent me, Jesus, to bring you in, to, to be the invitation to you, but you rejected me. And he's saying, so I'm going to bring everybody who didn't want me, who didn't want to come, they're the ones I'm going to invite, or they're the ones I'm actually going to go get. And that's really the message of the gospel, is that Jesus came to save the Jews. The Jews rejected him, and he came for us. He actually came for all of us at the same time. But God originally chose the Jewish people, but they rejected Jesus. And the doors flung open for everyone. So let me ask you something about this. uh, Because, you know, you may think, well, I ain't a Pharisee, I ain't a Sadducee, I ain't no Jew. How does this apply to me? Well, let me tell you. Um, I think everybody wants to think that they were the person invited to the story. If you put yourself into the story, where do you fall? Were you the someone who was invited? Or were you the cripple guy that they had to go grab because nobody else wanted to go? I think for most of us, we would say, well, yeah, we're the ones who are invited. I mean, maybe we've been going to church our whole life or maybe... Um, we grew up, you know, we have family that was uh, believers or something, and we're the ones who are invited. So that's where I fall into this story. I'm the one invited, and I'm the one who doesn't want to go, or I'm the one who does want to go, and I accepted the invitation. But I think that's where we get a little messed up, because actually the, the people that were invited were the Jewish people, the people God chose from the beginning. They were the inv- invited and we are actually the bums. We're actually the drug addicts. We're actually the guys behind Safeway. We're actually all the underbridgers. We're actually the ones who we didn't want. We didn't even know about the feast because we never ever heard about it. We ever got no invitation. And Jesus opened it up to us to be able to come in to enjoy this feast. And it doesn't really say anything about how these people reacted because. It sounds like Jesus just had this mission. He got all of his servants together. The, 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 the guy who's putting on the feast, he just got everybody together. He said, look, I ain't eating dinner alone tonight. You just go get anybody. But specifically those I didn't invite. And they just grabbed them all. And that's where you and I fall into the story is that we are actually the ones who were never invited. We're the ones that God himself came and grabbed. And he says, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming, because I don't want to eat alone. And for some of us, uh, we've kind of lost that that gratitude for that. And I don't know how many of you listening or watching today are Christians, or who claim to be a Christian, or I don't know how many of you have been baptized 
and have accepted Jesus into your heart. Maybe all, maybe some, I'm not sure. But I think what can happen is that, you know, you can get dunked in the water, you can be all excited, yay! And then a year later, you're as cold as ice. You know, you're like, uh, what just happened? Uh, and some people say, you know what, I think I just got wet, actually. Uh, nothing really changed there. Um, but I'm wondering, maybe we just lost that excited, uh, that, that part of being joyful, being excited about what God did for us, because I think we've forgotten who we are and who we've been. Uh, there's this verse in Ephesians 2 I want to read to you. Ephesians 2, 1 to 3, and it says this about us. And you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that's now at work, and the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. That was us, dead in our trespasses and sins. We weren't able to get an invitation and say, Nah, I don't want to go. We didn't get nothing. We were dead. We were under the bridge. We had no ability to even walk there because we were so lame and broken to get into the feast. But Jesus opens the way, and that's what it's all about. The story is that Jesus came to get us. Jesus came to rescue us because God wants to be with us. He doesn't want to be alone. He wants us. And that's what he says, and that's who we are. And that's what we have to realize is that we ought to be grateful. We ought to be grateful that we're a Christian because this is something that we never should have had. Now, we, we, don't, we never should have been able to be called children of God, sons of God. We never should have been able to have an eternal life with God because of our, all of we've done to reject Him, all we've done to dishonor Him. And I don't know about you, but I know I've certainly done my fair share of things to feel guilty and to know that I certainly do not deserve His goodness. But in His love and His grace, He came and rescued us. He didn't send us a card. He came down Himself in the form of of flesh, Jesus, and He rescued us. So, a couple of things I want to say to uh, to us, just in closing, is that if you're a Christian, what is the most important thing in your life? Do you have the two busy pox to where you are so concerned with your future, with your career, with your goals with your relationship, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, uh, maybe your job, you're so busy trying to work to, uh, to, to save money for something. I know I've been there uh, trying to get a house or a new car or whatever it is. We're so busy focused on that that we forget about what we've been given that's so precious, that we've been given eternal life, that we've been given this relationship with God. We forget that. Have you forgotten that? I think that's what you need to ask yourself. And have, are you losing that fire, that, that love for what He's done for you? Because it is amazing. And He's inviting us not to have this big feast with everybody and get fat and enjoy, which, I mean, you certainly could. But He's saying, look, I want to, have, I want to, I want to be with you. I want you to be in my presence forever and right now. And I want to change your life. And that's what happened with all the lame, he called them in, and they were, they were, it doesn't say, but I'm sure they were changed. They'd never eaten like that before. I'm sure they didn't want to leave. And I hope we can be that way. I hope we can really be appreciative of what, what it is to be a Christian. And, you know, I think we can maybe get that confused sometimes. Maybe for a lot of the young people growing up, we think being a Christian is just, oh, they, you know, they go to church, they, they obey these rules, they, they don't wear this, they don't wear that. But you know what, I think we're starting to realize and we're starting to understand what the truth is, is that, 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 doesn't, that those things are not what identify a Christian. A Christian is someone who's been saved and ransomed by Jesus. A Christian is someone who has a relationship with God and that's what a Christian is, to be like Christ, to be ransomed, to be changed. And that's what God did for us. 
And we're becoming like Jesus. Those are some of the characteristics. Yeah, they do go to church. Christians do, uh, you know, maybe dress modestly and, and things like that. But that that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that we're invited to the feast. We're in. We got it. We, you know, we've been, we got pulled out and we're there and thank God I'm there and I ain't never going back. And one final thing for the people who maybe you don't believe, um, for whatever reason, because we've all been there, uh, whether you grew up in church or whether you never did, I don't know, but just know that God is coming. And He's came already. He sent His Son, Jesus, to come and to show you how much He loves you, how badly He wants you to come to this feast with Him forever. And He sent Him and He died on a cross so that you, can, you, you and I can be forgiven of everything we've done wrong against God, all the things we've said and done uh, to dishonor Him, all the things we've sinned against Him, uh, the ways, different ways. He came for us, and you know what? We're broken. We've all been there, the broken, the lame, the poor, the blind, the needy, the cheating, the, the addicted, the pornographers, whatever it is. That's who he came for, and he came for us, and he came for you. And I just want you to know that, um, that Jesus, the feast is open for you, and he's calling. So if you want to come at any time, you can accept him into your heart. And I just want you to know that this, you know, this message is for us. It's for me. It's to real remember that this, this faith and this hope I have is such a gift from God. And I pray that it would be the most important thing for this year in our lives, for my life, because it is the most important thing. Everything else is going to fade. Our career, uh, our relationships, uh, the money we have, how good you look, how good you don't look whatever it is, but this is going to last forever. What Jesus did for us, and whether we accept it, whether we walk into it, whether we enjoy the feast or not, that is up to you. So I pray that you enjoy the feast, that you remember how awesome it is to be a believer, and that you enjoy the feast, the presence with God right here, right now, every day, and look forward to it forever. So we thank you for listening today. We hope to see you soon. We want to thank you for watching our video today. And I just want to remind you to like, share, subscribe. If you think the video helped you today, share it on social media. Share it on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And I want to also give a shout out to everyone who was in the drawing and won a prize. Thank you for participating and we want to give this to you just to let you know we appreciate you and it's probably something we'll be doing annually um, so just look forward to it and uh, just want to remind everybody that we're going to be having more videos we have two videos every week so stay tuned be subscribed and lastly we want to we hope and pray that you would find the regeneration of your heart and souls to know that you have new life and love in Jesus alone thank you <music>